but there is a region perhaps not so high as this from the scientific point of view where yet the word truth may begin to be rightly applied i believe that every fact in nature is a revelation of god is there such as it is because god is such as he is and i suspect that all its facts impress us so that we learn god unconsciously true we cannot think of any one fact thus except as we find the soul of it its fact of god but from the moment when first we come into contact with the world it is to us a revelation of god his things seen by which we come to know the things unseen how should we imagine what we may of god without the firmament over our heads a visible sphere yet a formless infinitude what idea could we have of god without the sky the truth of the sky is what it makes us feel of the god that sent it out to our eyes if you say the sky could not but be so and such i grant it with god at the root of it there is nothing for us to conceive in its stead therefore indeed it must be so in its discovered laws light seems to me to be such because god is such its so-called laws are the waving of his garments waving so because he is thinking and loving and walking inside them we are here in a region far above that commonly claimed for science open only to the heart of the child and the childlike man and woman a region in which the poet is among his own things and to which he has often to go to fetch them for things as they are not as science deals with them are the revelation of god to his children i would not be misunderstood there is no fact of science not yet incorporated in a law no law of science that has got beyond the hypothetic tentative that has not in it the will of god and therefore may not reveal god but neither fact nor law is there for the sake of fact or law each is but a mean to an end in the perfected end we find the intent and there god not in the laws themselves save as his means for that same reason human science cannot discover god for human science is but the backward undoing of the tapestry web of god science works with its back to him and is always leaving him his intent that is his perfected work behind it always going farther and farther away from the point where his work culminates in revelation doubtless it thus makes some small intellectual approach to him but at best it can come only to his back science will never find the face of god while those who would reach his heart those who like dante are returning thither where they are will find also the spring-head of his science analysis as well as death as well analysis is death not life it discovers a little of the way god walks to his ends but in so doing it forgets and leaves the end itself behind i do not say the man of science does so but the very process of his work is such a leaving of god's ends behind it is a following back of his footsteps too often without appreciation of the result for which the feet took those steps to rise from the perfected work is the swifter and loftier ascent if the man could find out why god worked so then he would be discovering god but even then he would not be discovering the best and the deepest of god for his means cannot be so great as his ends i must make myself clearer ask a man of mere science what is the truth of a flower he will pull it to pieces show you its parts explain how they operate how they minister each to the life of the flower he will tell you what changes are wrought in it by scientific cultivation where it lives originally where it can live the effects upon it of another climate what parts the insects bear to its varieties and doubtless many more facts about it ask the poet 
what is the truth of the flower? And he will answer, Why, the flower itself, the perfect flower, and what it cannot help saying to him who has ears to hear it. The truth of the flower is not the facts about it, be they correct as ideal science itself, but the shining, glowing, gladdening, patient thing throned on its stalk, the compeller of smile and tear from child and prophet. The man of science laughs at this, because he is only a man of science, and does not know what it means. But the poet and the child care as little for his laughter as the birds of God, as Dante calls the angels, for his treaties on aerostation. The children of God must always be mocked by the children of the world, whether in the church or out of it, children with sharp ears and eyes but dull hearts. Those that hold love the only good in the world, understand and smile at the world's children, and can do very well without anything they have got to tell them. In the higher state to which their love is leading them, they will speedily outstrip the men of science, for they have that which is at the root of science, that for the revealing of which God's science exists. What shall it profit a man to know all things and lose the bliss, the consciousness of well-being, which alone can give value to his knowledge? God's science in the flower exists for the existence of the flower in its relation to his children. If we understand, if we are at one with, if we love the flower, we have that for which the science is there, that which alone can equip us for true search into the means and ways by which the divine idea of the flower was wrought out to be presented to us. The idea of God is the flower. His idea is not the botany of the flower. Its botany is but a thing of ways and means, of canvas and color and brush in relation to the picture in the painter's brain. The mere intellect can never find out that which owes its being to the heart supreme. The relation of the intellect to that which is born of the heart is an unreal except it be a humble one. The idea of God, I repeat, is the flower. He thought it, invented its means, sent it a gift of himself to the eyes and hearts of his children. When we see how they are loved by the ignorant and degraded, we may well believe the flowers have a place in the history of the world, as written for the archives of heaven, which we are yet a long way from understanding, and which science could not, to all eternity, understand or enable to understand. Watch that child. He has found one of his silent and motionless brothers, with God's clothing upon it, God's thought in its face. And what a smile breaks out of the divine understanding between them! Watch his mother when he takes it home to her. No nearer understanding it than he. It is no old association that brings those tears to her eyes, powerful in that way as are flowers, and things far inferior to flowers. It is God's thought, unrecognized as such, holding communion with her. She weeps with a delight inexplicable. It is only a daisy, only a primrose, only a pheasant eye, Narcissus, only a lily of the field, only a snowdrop, only a sweet pea, only a brave yellow crocus. But here to her is no mere fact, here is no law of nature, here is a truth of nature, the truth of a flower, a perfect thought from the heart of God, a truth of God, not an intellectual truth, but a divine fact, a dim revelation, a movement of the creative soul. Who but a father could think the flowers for his little ones? We are nigh the region now in which the Lord's word is at home. I am the truth.' 